thank you for joining me on another episode of She Leads Now podcast, where we help career and entrepreneurial women gain the tools to develop a success mindset, create winning strategies, build collaborative relationships, and take bold action towards creating impact and fulfillment in their lives and careers. I'm your host, Sabine Gideon, and I'm on a mission to awaken and activate women and emerging leaders so they can tap into their innate leadership ability, elevate their influence, and create the impact they were destined to make. If you're ready to up-level your confidence, courage, and influence, you've come to the right place. Join me weekly for insights, strategies, and resources to help you grow, develop, and embody the leader you were meant to be so that you can make the impact you know you are called to make and establish the legacy you've always dreamed. The world eagerly awaits the emergence of your brilliance, impact, and influence. So with that, let's dive into this week's episode. Hello, and welcome to another episode of She Leads Now. I am your host, Sabine Gideon, and I am so excited to have you joining me this week. Hopefully, you've had a chance to listen to the amazing episode with Miss Ebene Allman, in which she shares her, her journey of really turning pain into purpose, and then taking that and leveraging that to support others during their process of of moving away from pain. And so hopefully you've been able to catch that particular episode. If you haven't, feel free to go back and take a listen. Subscribe so that you get notifications on both Wednesdays and Fridays when the Fearless Female Fridays episodes are released. So for today, we are going to be talking about what women need to succeed in business. And before you you know, start to roll your eyes, it's actually not what you would expect. And so this is a solo episode with just us today. The the backdrop around, you know, why this episode has come to pass is really because, you know, in our time, in our society, uh, more and more women are starting businesses, more and more women are dedicated to evening the playing field when it comes to, you know, being female founders and securing funding for their businesses and really dominating in uh, much of the marketplace with their businesses and their innovations. And so, you know, depending on how long you've been in business, you know that there are a lot of trials, right? There are a lot of ebbs and flows, there are wins and losses, but there's also, you know, a lot of opportunity for us to grow personally as we're growing professionally as business owners and those who are leading teams. And so today I really wanted to talk about, you know, some of the things that we we may take for granted. I guess that's the best way to put it. Things that are already innate within us as women that we bring to the table and that is really that can really serve as our superpower especially during those lower moments and when you know business is ebbing and flowing or those moments when things are being disrupted and we're just trying to figure out how to move forward and so with that you know as you think about you know what we need obviously yes you need a great business model you need services or products that people are willing to buy. You need a strong team behind you. But let's talk about you as the, as the, as the individual, right? You as the leader, you as the business owner, what is it that you personally need to continue to succeed? And so first and foremost, patience. <laughs> and I, I would say, you know, just remembering that patience is a virtue and I'm not telling you that, you know, that you need to be patient with people who have negative opinions or who, you know, tell you that you'll never succeed or, you know, just never have anything nice to say. That's not what I'm referring to, but I'm, I'm referring to more so having patience with yourself and having patience with the process. As we know, despite the highlight reels on social media, success doesn't happen overnight. And we know that every overnight success, you know, they'll tell you themselves that they were at it for years before things, you know, quote unquote, took off for them. So just being mindful that, you know, if you are in the trenches, if you are showing up every day, if you are doing the work, if you are supporting your team, if you're supporting your clients and things don't necessarily seem to be 
popping off <laughs> the way that you you would want or that you would expect at this point, just understand that, you know, this is part of the process. The other piece to that too is, you know, just remember that part of the process to success or part of the road to success includes failure. And so I, I'm, you know, I'm a firm believer of embracing failure and not as a bad thing, but as, as a space where, you know, you get to learn, you get to grow, you get to identify strengths that you didn't know were there. And so seeing even the failures as opportunities, you know, to course correct or to dig in to something or to let go of something that may no longer serve you, your business or your team. The next one up is, you know, really it's about bringing your confidence with you, you know, for so many of us. And, and I don't mean to talk about being in business or being a business owner. Like it's, it's all negative and there are no wins. Don't get me wrong. There are plenty of wins, right? Being able to support your clients, seeing their transformation, being able to know that the work that you do each and every day is having an impact, even if it's in your community, in your household, in the broader space in your industry. But sometimes we forget that it takes a lot of guts. It takes a lot of courage to step out and to start a business, no less grow a business and then add in people and be responsible for their livelihood. And so, you know, when you think about the, the term imposter syndrome, right, we all, we all struggle with it. We all have moments, especially in those periods of growth or right before we're about to expand into something outside of our comfort zones. But just know that the fact that you even started a business, right? The fact that you even said, hey, I have an idea and I want to put that idea out there or that you are showing up on social and, and you're sharing your opinions or you're you know, doing demos for clients and you're sending out proposals that highlight your expertise and the impact that you're able to make. You know, those are those moments that, you know, I would encourage you to fall back on. You know, that takes a lot of courage. And those are the moments that are really, truly building your confidence because at the end of the day, you've gotten this far, right? So don't, don't be afraid to reflect back on your wins. I, I talk about the brag book, right? It, it, it applies whether you're in corporate America or you're owning your business. Document your wins so that when you're having those you know, low moments that you have something that you can refer back to to boost your confidence. And of course, you know, if you're if you're in the slumps, right? Because sometimes that happens too, get you a business buddy or a business bestie, I should say. Um, someone who can help boost your confidence, someone who reminds you that you are that chick, that you've done great things and that you are capable of doing even greater things. And that can be in the form of someone, you know, within a professional network that you're part of. It can be your homegirl who's also building a business, or it could just be your, your spouse or someone who, you know, loves and cares about you and is cheering and rooting for you. Be intentional about creating those opportunities for those confidence boosters as you're building your business and your team. The next thing that I would say would be, you know, to remain open and approachable. And I would even add humble to this, right? You know, especially as you're trying to expand your organization, as you're trying to grow your team, it's really important that we re remain in the space where we are open to feedback and that we're open to suggestions and even willing to let go of control and allowing others to step in to their zones of genius, right? So, you know, depending on where we are in business, you know, sometimes, especially when we're first starting out, we're doing all the things, right? Like we've, we've learned all the things, we, we're doing all the things and we like doing it a certain way. And then we start to bring in team members because we've reached capacity, but we may find ourselves in a space where we're still we're policing a little of how things get done. And this is a space where I would invite you to, you know, take a step back. You know, if you've hired experts to come in to help and to support you, let them do just that. Let them show off their zones of genius and their unique brilliance so that you could focus on your particular zone of genius. The other thing that I would say here is this doesn't necessarily just have to apply to your team members, but also your coaches and your mentors. If you have individuals which I would hope as, as a business owner, you have individuals that are helping to lead you in some capacity, right? Being open uh, to their suggestions. And, and I know that uh, when it comes to 
running a business, right? You're in it day to day. And there's just some things that other people can't necessarily counsel you on. But if, if someone has walked the path and you have decided to invest in their knowledge and their expertise and their coaching, you know, definitely stay open to that. Be willing to test things out. Because as we know, in entrepreneurship, it is all about testing and, and innovating and being creative and shifting when we need to and pivoting. So being willing to test things out and then deciding from there whether or not it's something that you want to move forward with or continue. The other thing that I would say would be a, a key piece uh, for women in business in, in terms of our in aiding our success is really around embracing our feminine side. Now, I'm not going to go into the whole, you know, feminine energy discussion. That's just not my thing uh, and not something that I subscribe to. But I think it's important for us to, you know, remain authentic to who we are. Many of us, you know, depending on our business models, depending on the products and services that we provide, we may be in male dominated spaces. And I know I've seen it a million times over, both in corporate and in entrepreneurship. There's a tendency to maybe believe that you have to show up a certain way, right, in order to gain respect or have earned or your seat at the table. What I would really invite you to do here is to shift your mindset away from, you know, what do I have to do to assimilate into whatever this environment is, if it's male dominated or whatever, towards how can I integrate who I am? How can I integrate, you know, what I bring to the table? I was actually having a conversation with someone not too long ago, and they've been in corporate America, and they've always been predominantly on on teams where they are the only female. And then on top of that, they're the only female of color. And so they've been facing this challenge, you know, for a good part of five or six years in their career. And one of the things that she said was, you know, I don't, I don't want to have to talk sports with the guys. I don't want to have to, you know, be that person. Like they're already doing that with each other. You know, for me, or as she was saying it for her, it was about how could she bring the things that were unique to her into that space versus feeling like she had to conform to the environment or conform to the conversation. Instead, she brought them into her world. And so I think that it's important that, you know, as, as we're growing and as we're building our businesses, that we are very mindful that who we are is enough how we conduct ourselves is quite all right. And it's a matter of, you know, allowing that, that light to shine in the spaces that we're sent into versus feeling like we have to dim it or feeling like we have to shift it just to quote unquote gain respect. The other key for success in business for women particularly you know I think this is a this is a no-brainer, but I, I feel like it needs to be said. It's really staying anchored in your why. You know, many of us start a business because there is a deep passion, whether it's, you know, related to our purpose, our faith. We see a need in the world. We see an opportunity that we know that we have the skills to be able to respond to and, and support. And so, you know, during those, those moments where there are challenges, you know, it's very important to, to, be anchored in that why, whatever that why is for you. Why did you start your business? What did you envision? What, what is it that you want to create from this thing? What impact do you want to make? What legacy do you want to leave? And actually, a study of women CEOs done by Corn Ferry show that more than two-thirds of the women polled said that they were motivated by a sense of purpose and that their belief that their company could have a positive impact, be it on the community, be it on their employees and the world around them. And so that's a lot of us. A lot of us have started our businesses because we, we believed we could change the world. We believe that we could change our environment. We believe that we could change our community. And so maintaining that North Star as the forefront will be helpful in, in helping you navigate some of those, you know, not so pretty parts or pretty aspects of owning and growing a business. And truthfully, I think that this is the, the superpower that we all possess because at the end of the day, yes, we're in business to uh, generate revenue, right? To take care of our families, of our communities, whatever your final financial obligations are. But I think even bigger than that, you know, we're in it because we want to make an impact. And so being 
being rooted in that why will help you make decisions, right? That will both help you generate revenue, but also make sure that you are making an impact in whatever sphere of influence that you've been assigned. The next key to success, if you will, is, you know, being tenacious. Again, if you've been in business for six months or if you've been in business for six years, you know that starting, building, growing, expanding a business requires tenacity. It requires persistence. And that's what I love about us as women. Like we we catch a vision and we will ride that thing through. I think that that's another superpower. And so you you have to tap into that innate ability to push through and figure things out, right? As, as women, we just figure things out. As moms, you just figure things out, right? As wives, you just figure things out. It's just a natural gift that you have. And so leveraging that same gift when it comes to your business and your organization and your teams and, you know, thinking through how can I leverage, you know, when, when changes come or when transitions come or when things are disrupted, disrupting the market, how do I tap into that, you know, push through power to really shift and, and make pivots relatively quickly? And so this is where I would say, you know, use your, use your observation skills, use your, you know, push through power to identify opportunities, to keep pulse on what's happening in your marketplace, what's happening in with your clients, what's happening in your particular industry, so that you can possibly meet the demands of what's taking place through your business and through your teams. So last but not least on this list of things that women need to succeed in business is really around just staying curious. And I've mentioned some of this, you know, throughout the, the episode here, but the point is when it comes to business, I am a firm believer that it is absolutely the best personal and professional development course that you can ever, ever take. And this is coming from a person who has spent a lot on coaching, a lot on courses, certifications, you name it. But it's the things that happen in the day-to-day that really challenge you, that really test your gangster, (laughs) in other words, in the sense that, you know, it it challenges you in your decision-making. It challenges you in your beliefs, in your, you know, in your thoughts, how you see yourself, how you see what you're capable of, how you view your team and the people who are around you. You know, the day-to-day challenges in business are the day-to-day opportunities for us to learn, grow, and develop. And even when those opportunities, you know, come wrapped in fear or failure, we still get to choose. We get to choose whether or not we're going to let the fear defeat us, or we get to choose if we're going to let, you know, whatever failure we're experiencing at the, at the moment become final in our own minds, or we can decide to lean into it and to really explore what is the lesson behind this? What have I learned about me? What have I learned about the situation? What can I make better? Where do I need more support? Where do I need more systems, more structure in my business? And then even with the wins, right? Sometimes we, we're so ready for the next thing, right? We don't stop and evaluate, well, what, what caused that win? And so even, even when we, we do have wins, I would invite you to, to explore, okay, well, what worked well? What, what did we have in place that allowed us to gain this particular win? And most importantly, how do we replicate that win so that we can continue to win over and over and over again and then improve so that we can make a bigger impact? And so those are, those are the top seven. I believe that was seven that I shared. And, and just a quick recap here, remembering that patience is a v- virtue, right? Success does not happen overnight. And it's, it's in the process really is where I think the growth happens. Sometimes, you know, while we may envision some grand future for ourselves, we may not personally be ready for that grand vision. We may not be ready for that particular platform. We may not be ready for that particular responsibility. And so the process, right, through which we develop patience and some other 
great virtues and characteristics, but sometimes it's the very process that we have to go through that develops us, that grows us, that gives us the tools and, and helps grows the muscles that we're going to need so that when we get to that place that we've been envisioning or we get to the platform or we're making the impact and we have the team that we, we need to, we're not going to stumble because the foundation has already been built. Secondly, you know, bring your confidence with you. I, I know, I know it's easy to, to experience that imposter syndrome. Sometimes it doesn't even have to require, you know, a big shift outside of your comfort zone. That inner critic is, is always ready, <laughs> is always ready to show up and, and to create doubt. But at the same time, you know, use, use the tools that you have, keep that brag book so that you can go back and you can look at the wins you know, develop a, a network of, you know, positive, supportive women in business who can lift you up when you are forgetting how great you are. Create that support system around you so that, you know, in those moments when your confidence is lacking, you have some external resources to help boost you back up. But at the end of the day, just know that if you've made it this far in business, and by this far, I mean, even if you are in month one of business, that it took a lot of courage, it took a lot of faith, it took a lot of confidence. And so let that be your evidence and let, let those little small things be the reminders to help you keep pushing forward. Next up is be open and be approachable, right? As leaders, we need to be learners. We, we have to maintain the posture of learning. We don't know all the things. And in fact, we should not know all the things. We should be surrounding us ourselves with individuals who do know the things because our responsibility is to really equip them with the tools and the resources that they need. Our responsibility is to keep the vision at the forefront of, of our minds and of their minds. And so, you know, being open to feedback, being open to suggestions, being open to let, letting people exercise their own creativity and unique brilliance is key. And also, if you have mentors and you have coaches, you know, lean in on their expertise. If they've walked the path that you're looking to walk, there's no need for you to try to re reinvent the wheel. Lean into their experience, test out what they share. Maybe it doesn't work out for you, but at least be willing to test things out and quickly pivot as needed. Next up, embrace your feminine side. And I'd even simplify that by just saying, embrace who you are, embrace all of who you are and what you bring to the table and what you bring into this world. And, you know, I would encourage you, you know, even in spaces where you may be the only one rather than doing the natural thing that we as humans, right, because we want to belong, now, rather than doing that natural thing of, of trying to fit in, I would invite you to stand out and invite others into your world. Stay anchored in your why and in your purpose, maintaining that at the forefront of your mind, your North Star, why am I doing this? And not only just why am I doing this, but how do I help others to see the vision? How do I help others gain buy-in, uh, whether that be my team, whether that be investors, whether it be people in my community that I'm looking to bring in to support the vision? Lastly, or I'm oh, sorry, we have two more. Second to last is maintain your tenacity, right? That push through power that we have in, in regular life, bring that with you into, into your business, right? And remind yourself, even when things get hard, even when things seem um, uncertain, like they do right now, that you have the ability in you to figure it out. You may not have all the answers uh, right away. You may not have 100% clarity, but if you can begin to take action, if you can begin to you know, step outside of the noise of what's happening and start to look for opportunities that that will actually help you end up on the other side of whatever challenge you may be facing. And then lastly, stay curious, stay curious. This is a journey. Building a business is, is no easy feat. And there's so much to learn. There's so much opportunity to grow. There's so much room to explore yourself to explore others and so you know lean into the the losses and into the wins and you know do that do that deep dive of what's going well what's not going well what can we shift what can we change do a SWOT analysis and continuously try to improve 
in those moments. So I said this episode is is not what you probably thought it was going to be just based on the title. But the core message here is that, you know, we really have what it takes to succeed in business. Leadership is innate in each and every one of us. And if your, your demonstration of leadership is through business and through building a business and growing a business and growing teams, I, I promise you, you have what it takes in you to succeed in that space. It's just a matter of being able to remind yourself of the great and amazing things that you've already done, as well as balancing, you know, what's happening externally and making sure that you have the tools, the resources, and the support that you need to help you to continue to push forward, regardless of what's happening in the econ economy or the market around you. And so that is all that I have for you today. I will be back next week uh, with another solo episode. You know, if, if anything that I said here really resonated with you, I encourage you to share this episode with a fellow female entrepreneur or CEO, you know, share this with her. Also, please don't forget to uh, subscribe and to rate the show because that actually helps us expand the reach so that more women business leaders will see this in their search. If you have questions, if you have thoughts, if you have comments, or if there are areas that you would like me to cover, I really encourage you to reach out to me directly. Feel free to send me an email at support at sabinegideon.com or send me a message on LinkedIn or IG, and I'd be happy to answer those questions for you and you know take any feedback that you have around topics for the show. Again, that's all that I have for you this week. Have a wonderful rest of the week, and I will talk to, with you soon. Take care. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of She Leads Now. Be sure to join us next week for another transformative discussion to help you grow, develop, and embody the courageous leader you've always been. Be sure to subscribe to the show to get alerts when new episodes drop and join us for our next Leaders Lounge meetup on Zoom. Details and dates for future sessions are included in the show notes below. So take a look there or head over to sabinegideon.com forward slash lounge to register and hold your spot for the next session. Again, that's sabinegideon.com forward slash lounge to grab your spot. Excited to connect with you all inside the lounge. Talk to you soon.